This year, Apple is releasing perhaps its most significant product ever in history. For $3,500, you will now be able to own a Vision Pro headset. This mixed reality device marks Apple's first significant new product since the introduction of the Apple Watch almost a decade ago. But Apple is trying to distinguish it from being known as augmented reality or virtual reality, and rather labeling the Pro a spatial computing device. But perhaps they should call it a new form of dystopian reality, because this product is one of the most heinous and terrifying pieces of technology that the world will become addicted to, and no one seems to be talking about it. Now for those who don't know, the Vision Pro is a device designed to be worn on your face, and what sets it apart from previous creations is that the conventional methods of controlling the computer such as a keyboard, mouse, or touchscreen are replaced by a user interface that primarily relies on eye tracking and gestures. It will track every part of you, every little eye movement, every emotion that you feel, and when you interact with the world through this spatial computing device, you will start to live in a completely new world. It even monitors your hand gestures to understand your intentions and preferences. References. In short, this device is the best machine to study people. It records you and your choices, it knows how your body language works, and feeds this data right back to the gurus at Apple, where this information is then assessed and utilized to make you more addicted to their products. And whilst there have been previous attempts at achieving similar goals with devices like the Google Glasses or Meta's Quest Pro, none of them are mainstream at the moment, and none of this has been an entirely unified experience. In other words, Apple's new product is truly unique. And because it's Apple, it will be terrifying. We're about to cross the Rubicon, and when we do, there's no turning back. And to understand why, we need to revisit a dystopian novel from the early 90s. In many ways, Snow Crash, written by the sci-fi author Neil Stephenson, predicted a world in which the Vision Pro would reign supreme. In it, the characters retreat from the physical world by grabbing a pair of goggles, strapping them to their faces, and escaping into virtual realms. The narrative takes readers on an expansive, nightmarish adventure across a fragmented and divided United States, where the protagonist, aptly named Hero Protagonist, enters a world that up until that point never really existed. In this futuristic, oppressive setting, the government has lost control of society, instead relinquishing law enforcement duties and other responsibilities to private enterprises. And as society becomes increasingly engrossed in virtual realities, influential capitalists seek to dominate not only the media, but also the thoughts and perceptions of their audiences, solidifying their status as modern day robber barons. And right now, we're seeing this. Companies like Apple, more powerful than nation states, is developing its own universe that we will be living in. Just look at all of Apple's technology and how integrated it has become into our everyday life. iPhones are everywhere, AirPods are everywhere, and now with the Vision Pro, we will be taking one step forward, as the Vision Pro will likely be the first device that will usher in society's migration into the metaverse. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just Zuckerberg's meta working on the metaverse. Other huge mega companies are also actively working on this 3D virtual world. It has the potential to be one of the most profitable moves any company could make. And once one of these mega companies do achieve this, there will be trillions at play. So why are they creating this headset in the first place? Well, a better question to ask is why not create it? Well, the AR VR market is growing at a frightening pace. By the end of the decade, it's expected to be worth an eye-watering $248.16 billion. With the Vision Pro, Apple, one of the most powerful tech companies in the world, the Vision Pro is vital to Apple's success. Apple's entire empire is built off innovation. If they don't innovate and get to the top of this market, they could very quickly lose out, just as Xerox did back in the 70s. And Apple is in a prime position to call all the shots here, to rule over a new digital empire. Sure, other products like the Vision Pro exist, MetaQuest Pro 2 and 3, Sony PlayStation's VR 2 and Microsoft's HoloLens, but they always focus primarily on gaming and entertainment, and they're nothing that groundbreaking. But the Vision Pro is an entirely different beast. It focuses on real-life situations, taking real-world scenarios and distorting them in never-before-seen ways. Apple is even considering using their newest product to help treat mental illnesses. And rather ironically, it could actually create a host of mental illnesses instead, but I'll get to this later. For the past 15 years, Silicon Valley CEOs have told us their product is going to change the world as we know it. But how much longer can they keep up the hype? Because honestly, we're the only ones who suffer if they fail. Corporations either get bought out or bailed out, no, no matter how unhinged their CEOs are. Investors just get stuck with the bill. But companies like Masterworks let us make up some ground financially while avoiding the stock market roller coaster. They give you the chance to invest in an asset that's endured life changing economic crashes. Blue chip art. The art Jay Z's been rapping about for years. No seriously, their Basquiat acquisition broke records last summer, and now you can actually invest in art of this caliber without even leaving your living room. Basquiat, Coors, Banksy, Picasso, and there's no authentication process needed on your part. Over 894,000 people have signed up, and they know even less about art as you do. Offerings from the bigger names have sold out in minutes, but my subscribers can still get priority access using the link in the description.
With 12 cameras, 5 sensors, and 6 microphones, Apple claims that the Vision Pro can update images at a speed 8 times faster than the blink of an eye. After placing the device in one's head, users will be able to view all their applications showcased on the screen. These apps can be accessed through various methods such as advanced eye tracking, voice commands, and simple finger gestures like tapping, double tapping, pinching, and holding, zooming in and out, and rotating. Furthermore, when another person comes into your field of view, you're provided with a notification that someone is approaching you. The augmented reality experience is amplified by both exterior and interior cameras. For the virtual reality aspect, the cameras are disabled, isolating the user from their surroundings and allowing them to solely perceive what is displayed on the screen. Apple Vision Pro users have the ability to scan their facial features and create highly realistic digital avatars of themselves when utilizing different video chat platforms such as FaceTime, Zoom, Google Meet, and Discord. These digital personas will be our representations in this brave new world. One user who tested the Vision Pro himself described how his body reacted to situations and his mind responded to the cacophony of sights, sounds, and sensory simulation. In one demo, he said he got to pet a freaking dinosaur. Not a beast that looks like a 3D model set against an illustrated background, but a realistic looking dinosaur that sniffed my hand and let me pet it. It's pretty clear that we have never seen anything like this before. We simply can't compute the impact that the Vision Pro will have on society. And that's why Apple is making a concerted effort to distinguish the headset from other available devices, advising developers to label the Pro a spatial computing device and not an entertainment device. And one key part of how we interact with this device will be through the adoption of avatars. But with the Vision Pro, it will be different. You see, typically avatars come in varieties, where you can take the form of anything, as we see with things like the Metaverse. And at first, it seems harmless. When you see the old version of Metaverse's graphics, these avatars look like a joke. But the speed at which they are now evolving in complexity should worry us all. This was highlighted during the Lex Freeman podcast with Zuckerberg, where Zuckerberg's avatar started to become photorealistic. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. With avatars now becoming more lifelike, with intricate facial expressions supported by a wide range of available emotes and actions. And with the Vision Pro, it's on a whole other level. But this could be problematic, as research is showing that the way individuals present themselves in virtual worlds can have an impact on their behavior towards others in the real world. In fact, just five minutes of exposure to virtual environments as either a hero or villain can lead people to either reward or punish anonymous strangers. In one study, when tasked with giving food to other participants, it was observed that participants who assumed the role of Voldemort poured almost twice the amount of spicy chili sauce than those who hadn't assumed the role of Voldemort. They assumed the role of evil, and this virtual representation translated into real-world actions. What happens when people spend hours, maybe even days or weeks, immersed in these virtual worlds? And it is important to remember here that the Vision Pro specializes in the creation of digital personas, far more realistic than flimsy-looking avatars with the cartoonish features. If avatars are mildly problematic, digital personas that is incredibly accurate representations of the user could prove to be catastrophic, leaving users, specifically users as brains unable to differentiate between a human and a digitalized version of one. But perhaps even a bigger concern here is that as technology evolves, avatar representations will evolve so quickly that experts now worry where the significant amount of sensitive information regarding users' facial features will go. And how much will be necessary? How much biometric data, eye scans, voice recordings, and even fingerprints will be needed? And who will use this information? You see, the more biometric data that companies like Meta and Apple have on you, the more they can actually manipulate your own psychology and biology, molding your behavior, preferences, and future decisions. And with the rapid evolution of avatars comes the rapid evolutions of deepfakes. Currently, synthetic videos or audio recordings created through deepfakes can easily be mistaken for genuine recordings of the individuals they portray. Just look at those Joe Rogan TikToks going around, where they promote these garbage products through deepfake Joe Rogan clips. Well, look, that Alpha Grind product that's all over TikTok, if you go to Amazon and you type in libido booster for men, and this is just the basic version of it. We have no idea what it's going to look like several years down the line in the Vision Pro world. I'm talking about hyper-realistic avatars with human-like expressions and gestures, with the potential to establish trust with you being completely designed to deceive you, used to just influence your opinion or buy more products. For instance, imagine an advertisement where hyper-realistic avatars of your friends express glowing admiration for a product, or imagine an avatar of your teenage crush telling you how great you would look in a new clothing line. Even more concerning, hyper-realistic avatars of familiar individuals individuals could be exploited for social engineering. Take this big farmer endorsed drug, don't eat that, eat this, vote for this party, etc. Which brings us back to the Vision Pro and the dystopian web that it spins.
Last year on X, Apple's head honcho Tim Cook tweeted, Welcome to the era of spatial computing with the Apple Vision Pro. You've never seen anything like this before. And he's right, we really haven't. But for everyone who values face-to-face -face interactions, especially in this era of remote working, where genuine human connections seem to be disappearing, we should all be having concerns about the Vision Pro, particularly the augmented reality aspect. And whilst this is amazing technology, we have no idea how AI will change our culture and society you see, unlike VR, which is completely virtual, AR is not. It simply augments your real world environment. In VR, users are very much controlled by the system. But with AR, users can directly affect their presence in the real world, which allows you to stay in augmented reality for hours at a time, if not days. And there's a reason Apple was doing this, because of course it provides a much better experience. In fact, this is going to change the entire dynamic of computing and work. But the augmented reality aspect does create a paradox, as it's designed to give you access to the greater real world, where you can call people and see them right there in front of you at any time of the day without doing anything. You can be on a plane, and you can be living in another world, also while looking around you and talking to your friends. It removes you from the real world, but seems to give you greater access to the real world. At least you seem to be in the real world, but a real world on steroids. Because you are presented with a detailed depiction of your surroundings, not your real surroundings, enhanced by sophisticated interactive software. And Apple's proposed solution for maintaining in-person social interactions while using the device is EyeSight, which scans your eyes and facial features during the initial setup of the Vision Pro and then utilizes this data to construct a 3D model of your face that's displayed on the external screen. So those who look at you will see a representation of your eyes, although it is entirely artificial. And you see, eyes are often considered the windows to the soul. And regardless of how advanced the artificial model may be, it will never replace the authenticity of a real life gaze. You will never actually be able to tell someone's intentions. You can never fall in love properly if you live in the augmented reality world. By wearing a computer on one's face, the eyes dull. And so too does your life, perhaps by design. I mean, just consider a scenario where you're wearing this headset, engaged in a conversation with someone, and then you receive a notification. Currently, you can simply disregard the notification and put your phone away. However, complications arise when the physical reality transforms into a virtual reflection, accompanied by intrusive alerts, and the device happens to be attached to your face. You can never truly be present, and neither can the people you're talking to. Everyone's constantly distracted in an endless loop of dopamine, lacking any real human connection or any real soul to one another, isolating you from the real world, not really connecting you to it, just connecting you to a false version of it, expediating our transition into a metaverse controlled by big tech elites, one that as the world adopts to the Vision Pro will become harder and harder to leave. So that begs the question, what will this even do to our brains? Over the course of approximately 7 million years, the size of the human brain has increased threefold, with the majority of this expansion taking place within the last 2 million years. The expansion has been facilitated by better nutrition and better medicine, but it's also been facilitated by intimate human connections. The Vision Pro will likely destroy these human connections largely by destroying our brains. The Vision Pro is so powerful that it can quite literally rewire the human brain spend enough time in augmented and virtual realities, and you may emerge a totally different person, a puppet on a virtual string, a shadow of your previous self, a shell of a human craving to put the headset back on. Smartphones and other digital devices have already prompted us to think in a distinctly different manner and experience various emotions very differently from the past. Technology is altering our memory, our consciousness, our concentration, our reward mechanisms and sleep patterns. So what happens when the technology is on your face, directly covering the aforementioned eyes into the soul? After all, the extensive utilization of technology, particularly smartphones and social media, has had a profound influence on the human attention span and is leading us to be more socially isolated and mentally unwell. And by erecting obstacles that separate us from one another, technology is already destroying our ability to empathize. Compared to the Vision Pro, smartphones and other popular digital devices look quaint. Remember, current tech is already shrinking our gray matter, the part of the brain that allows us to control movement, memory, and emotions. The Vision Pro will likely accelerate the shrinking process. Already, half the population of the US is addicted to their phones, probably way more than this. Everyone's addicted to video games, everyone's addicted to their phone. It's become our second brain. We spend all hours of the day on it, and if not our phones, our laptops. Millions are also addicted to video games around the world, mostly lonely young men. 
so consumed by gaming because they can't experience the same joys they get from games as in the real world. But when you put a computer, one of the most advanced computers in the world, with mind-blowing augmented reality features, and you have a recipe for a huge change in society. As soon as the Vision Pro ships in February, our entire days will likely be consumed by augmented and virtual priorities, orchestrated by Apple and subsequently other companies like Meta, where all of our waking hours will be spent in an alternate reality constructed by big tech companies. Companies that are known to censor, silence, and use slave labor against the population. Where the same psychological tactics that currently keep us glued to our smartphones will be amplified to an unprecedented level. Not just the technology itself, but also the applications, all the small little games, the TikToks, and whatever else comes around the corner will be designed so addictively that it will be impossible to escape. It's a terrifying prospect because the Vision Pro is truly remarkable. It will definitely provide you with an extraordinary, utterly absorbing experience, ensuring that you will never be bored again. You could stare at your wall all day long, but as long as you have the Vision Pro, you could be living in a virtual paradise. Whilst you're there in the gray, feeling depressed, feeling down, isolated from everyone, feeling numb, you can just put on the headset and all of that slowly fades away. And with that, so too does our imagination and creativity. After all, it's during these moments of boredom and pain that ignites human imagination and ambition. But if you're constantly engrossed in the captivating virtual worlds readily available to you, there will be no room left for creativity and individual thought. And to understand this future, it really helps to go back to 2016, when Keji Chi Masuda unveiled a disturbing short film envisioning a sci-fi-like landscape, where Vision Pro-like devices are the norm. Aptly titled Hyperreality, Matsuda's film delves into a world where the boundaries between digital media and the physical realm have seamlessly merged, showcasing an extraordinary concept of augmented reality taken to its utmost extent, where interactive virtual interfaces permeate the urban surroundings, and individuals' identities are shaped and communicated through digital platforms. This disturbing creation, according to Matsuda, was intended to display a new vision of the future, where physical and virtual realities have merged, and the city is saturated in media. Which does sound eerily similar to what Tim Cook's been saying. The whole narrative of the movie centers around Juliana Resrepo, a 42 year old resident of Medellin, Colombia, who finds herself disenchanted with her life in the city. And as she navigates through the bustling streets, her surroundings are inundated with games, Google Alerts, and an array of other functionalities, accompanied by intrusive advertisements that constantly interrupt her journey. But she wasn't wearing a Vision Pro. However, you would be forgiven for thinking otherwise. Especially as the Vision Pro is now being released, this stuff's no longer sci-fi fiction, it's becoming reality, and no one seems to say anything about it. And after releasing the film, Matsuda stated, the convergence of our physical and virtual realities is steadily increasing. Technologies like VR, augmented reality, wearables, and the internet of things are indicating a future where technology will encompass every facet of our lives. Eight years on, and his words do seem profoundly prophetic. And the title of the movie was inspired by the work of Jean Baudillard, a French philosopher who introduced the concept of hyperreality, which describes the almost impossible task of distinguishing between reality and its representations. This inability to distinguish between the real and unreal creates a profound sense of confusion, and his whole concept of hyperreality is intimately connected to his notion of simulacrum, which he defines as a phenomenon that substitutes reality with its depictions. He argued that the modern world is a simulacrum, where genuine reality has been supplanted by deceptive images to such an extent that distinguishing between what is real and what is not becomes impossible. In his book Simulation, he presents the four stages of humanity's descent into the unreal. First, there is truth, an objective reality that is accurately represented and easily identifiable. Two, reality exists, but its representation is distorted. Three, reality is bastardized, superseded by a proliferation of fake representations. And four, reality as an objective concept is dead. There is no relationship whatsoever between accurate faithful representations and manufactured ones. And right now, we are either living in stage two or three. But with the Vision Pro coming out now, it seems like we're about to enter stage 4, where reality doesn't really exist, just augmented and virtual forms of it. 